Good morning everybody. I am just off Sloan Square at the moment. I am heading down to Elizabeth Street to go to Lace and Tours, smell some perfumes, we'll vlog the decorations down that way and then we are going to Harrods because Harrods at Christmas is just the best. Get the building getting ready for Christmas. There's some lights, they're not on yet, but cheerful to see. Mungo and Maud windows are always very, very cute. In case you haven't guessed by that, we are on Elizabeth Street now. Got some lights. Some very pretty shop fronts. And that is where I am heading. This is not very Christmassy, but it's very pretty. So you've got Jewel Loves, and then I love the colours in this floral arrangement. Again, it's not technically Christmassy, but the colours make it very sort of rich and festive. The Joanna Wood window is always lovely as well. It's kind of unfortunate it's right behind the lamppost so you never kind of, you can't kind of step back and get the full picture but it's always beautiful. And here it is a little bit closer so we've got a big sleigh, some beautiful foliage. And now we're going to head down and see what Peggy portion have got in store for us. And this is the overall front door this year. I feel like they've had better years, not gonna lie. Like it's cute. It is very cute. But I feel like I've seen better. Hey, I'm leaving Elizabeth Street. Um wasn't blown away, to be honest, by any of those decorations. My eye is still a bit swollen, so I'm still not doing eye makeup. I feel like it looks really odd on camera. Yeah, I don't know if it's just because like Last year it was on, then it was off, then it was on, then it was off, and lockdown was happening, then it wasn't, then we were out, then we were in. If maybe this year people just haven't really invested into their Christmas decorations in the same way because, you know, just in case things happen, because obviously with commercials these things need to be planned so far in advance, they're probably planned when we were still in lockdown in like March. But anyway, we are now walking to Harrods where hopefully we will be blown away. So I'm walking up West Hawkins Street now. Um, so there's Daniel Galvin to give you a, an idea of where I am. And this is, this is a bit more like it guys. Trees and this beautiful entrance here. See, this, this is more what I was expecting on Elizabeth Street. And Waitrose has got trees up above it. Look at this, this is it. Neil Strain Floral Couture. This is what we wanted. There's Louise Kennedy. Again, a bit more impressive. Those are the lights on Malcolm Street. Again, probably would be better in the dark, but very, very pretty. The door windows are very pretty. I do love the blue in the in last year's and in this year's beauty campaign, sort of celestials theme. But I'm not denying that this is very beautiful. This is editing me of the future. I actually decided to take the footage of what I took at Harrods and make it a separate Harrods tour. That was actually yesterday's video, so I will link that up in the eye if you haven't seen it already. I just figured there was like half an hour of footage and it kind of stood alone rather than putting it into this video for 
everyone to see if they didn't really want a super in-depth Harrods tour. So on to Covent Garden. Okay, I'm not quite hands-free, but I'm as hands-free as I'm ever going to be because I will have luggage tomorrow. So I am going in to the Lisa Eldridge shop. I had a slight repeat of the Fortnum and Mason situation in Lisa Eldridge where the shop was louder than me in terms of my camera picking anything up. So you've got a bit of a voiceover going on in this video. I talked back in January about how I wanted some Lisa Eldridge rings. So I was very excited to see the jewellery in person in the shop. In the jewellery cabinet, she had Audrey Hepburn's Cartier lipstick holder on display. There's a whole video on Lisa's channel about that, which I'm sure if you're interested, you will have watched already. You can see it in the shop in real life and you can see the AF engraving on of her married initials on the bottom. And it was just a really special piece to get to see. As well as the Cartier lipstick holder, a lot of Lisa's vintage collection was on display and that really was my main reason for wanting to visit the shop as much as I have liked the lipsticks that I've had so far already. It was really getting to see those vintage pieces that I most wanted to do. I loved getting to see all the old packaging and the designs in person. So much of it really wouldn't look out of place on the shelves today to be honest and just to get to reflect on the people who might have owned and used these things, people who obviously prized them enough to keep them in decent condition to pass on so that they could end up in Covent Garden in Lisa's shop today rather than just somebody who had this and, you know, used it up and threw it away the way so many people would have. I love this old packaging for the number 7 range, it looks so ready for someone's dressing table, just so much more glamorous than number 7 packaging looks today. Um, but one of the things I was most excited to see was the Dunhill Lighter Compact. Lisa has shown this in depth in her vintage makeup collection video, so again I'm sure if you're interested in it you've seen it, but it was such a joy to get to see it in real life. I talked in my Dior Christmas lipstick set video about my love of old compacts, so as you can imagine, this was just thrilling to get to see so many gathered together in one place. I love this Leaning Tower of Pisa style lipstick case and again one from Lisa's video, the Salvador Dali Bird in the Hand compact was a really beautiful piece to get to see in real life. It felt like such a privilege to have all this laid out for us to wander about and see and up at the top of that particular bit as well we also had this piano compact. The legs on this fold in so that the owner could take it out if they wished um, and then they fold out to obviously make it a display piece too. So. That did really appeal to the novelty loving side of me. It was quite interesting as well, like having been to the Imperial War Museum in day two. If you've not caught up in that vlog, I will link it up in the eye. But to also see some of the, the packaging from wartime and to see from quite a sort of specific niche point of view how war and rationing actually affected beauty products. Speaking of loving a novelty item, I also eventually got to the Lulu Guinness store on day 3. I love this black present bag, I think it's super super cute and since my visit she's actually brought out a red version that's got Swarovski crystals on it and I would very much enjoy owning both. I would have enjoyed a red version even if it hadn't had crystals on it, if it had just been a red velvet version I would have also been very into that main bag that I went in to see was the brown croc queenie bag. I think I would get so much wear out of this. I got a brown croc bag for my birthday and 
I returned it and swapped it for some other things but that was more because of the quality of the bag I just didn't feel it was up to par but the style was spot on so I think this could be a nice alternative I also do love the iconic Lulu Lips clutch, definitely one for a future purchase. Definitely hoping for some Lulu handbags to join my lineup in the future. Hey guys, so I went to Lee Seldridge and didn't buy any lipstick because I couldn't get near the lipstick counter, um, but I did get to see all of her vintage stuff that she's got on display, which was amazing. Um, yeah, if you like vintage makeup, it's so worth the trip. Um, but I've come down to the Strand. And they have got their Christmas lights up. They're very, very pretty. I tried to go to Shake Shack, but there was a huge queue and not very many seats. So there's a Leon down here, according to Google Maps. And I'm hoping I might have better luck with getting a seat at Leon. I see it, it is across the road, but yeah. So this is now the home of Six, um, which if you've not seen, is just absolutely brilliant. As I said, the Prince of Egypt was amazing but they're just very different shows so like like six is a cast of six people prince of egypt's like a full ensemble cast amazing choreography like it, it's a proper show if you know what i mean so yeah both excellent both highly recommended and now i'm going to go to leon had my Leon and come back out and it's a bit darker now so you can see the lights slightly better other than when a bus goes right through my, my shop. There we go. They're very pretty aren't they? I am heading back to Fortnum's. There's just a couple of things that I took from my video the other day that I want to take again. So yeah I'm at Piccadilly Circus at the moment. These are the beautiful street lights outside Fortnum's. So, as you can tell, I am back outside. So, there we are, just to finish it off. I have made some purchases, just some sweet things that they don't sell online, so I can't get them in my Christmas hamper. I thought I would maybe take a quick swiss through Burlington Arcade, because um, usually that's lovely at Christmas. So, I thought we could go have a quick look at the lights. Still get ages before I need to get to the theatre. Let's have a look at some Christmas lights. Oh, here's the Roja window. They always do a nice display. I haven't seen the new Bond film yet. It's not that new anymore, is it? It's now been out for a few months. I will see it at some point. I have a Sunny World card and I don't even use it remotely enough, so. I'm sure I will end up seeing it before it leaves the cinema altogether. I've not been to the cinema for ages. And then when I have, I've seen things like I saw Dean Evan Hansen because I knew that was going to have such a short run. I feel like I sometimes get into a bit of a sort of sense of false security with the bigger films. And I'm like, oh, they'll run for ages. And then suddenly they're finishing and I've still not gotten around to seeing them. And Peel has got the, the No Time to Die poster in the window. Oh, so it's... I think it's them that's collaborating and then they've just taken over the arcade by extension. I'm not sure. And there is the beautiful Ralph Lauren displays. They have always been, whenever I've been in New York at Christmas time, they have always been like my favourite displays to look at. Um, you know, I just I love Ralph Lauren aesthetic in general, that sort of preppy American vibe, I'm quite on board with it. And they do Christmas just so well. Always really nice, but always quite classic and quite chic and just, just does it really, really well. I'm a big fan. Yeah, let's head on to New Bond Street, which I'm sure is going to be full of beautiful displays for us to enjoy before I make my way to the theatre. Tiffany and Cole have got the moon and dreams and things. 
whole street just looks so so pretty. And we've got Boodles there. And then this is the front of Ralph Lauren which has a bit of a crowd for very obvious reasons. So you've got the tree at this side, more window space, more trees up at the top, little Ralph's coffee cart. It's tiring to me because it's, it's hard to... Super cute. It's Cartier which always does a good display. The vulgarity display is um, very effective. Okay, one last stop before I sign off for day two. Here is the front of Annabelle's. They've done it like a gingerbread house this year. Um, it's not obviously very lit up, so I feel like this might actually have been better in the daytime. But I don't know if I'll be in this area tomorrow. So, in case I'm not, here is the front of Annabelle's, um, which is a famous club um, that usually do a really, really good display. So, as you can see, it's it's taken over the whole front of the building. It's very impressive. It just might have been better in daylight. But with that said, I'm off to the theatre now for my second time seeing the Prince of Egypt in two days. Uh, and my camera battery and my phone battery are low. So I'm going to sign off and I will see you tomorrow. I lied. have one more clip for tonight. These are the Carnaby Street lights and now I really am off to the theatre. <laughs> Look how busy this is. I'm like going home and it's still like this. So here is how Covent Garden looks at night. You can see the way that all the, the lights pick out the edges of the buildings. It looks super, super cute. And there's the tree all lit up and sparkling. Okay guys, it is checkout day. I am back to having my cake and I've now got my two tote bags. Problem is all the heavy stuff is in the tote bags because like my laptop and my books and stuff that I want for the train are in the tote bags and then all my clothes are in the case. So the case is super light but the bit that I'm actually having on my shoulder is the heavy bit. Um, so I'm back in Covent Garden. I don't think I'm going to do very much today because I've got the bags and stuff. Um, so I have ordered Shake Shack so I'm just waiting on it being ready and yeah I'm gonna take my time eating that and then wander in the direction of Euston at a very leisurely pace. It's about as exciting as today is getting. So I got the standard shack burger and then I've got the truffle fries but I've got the truffle sauce on the side because I'm a bit picky with truffles. Sometimes I like it and other times I don't. I've never really quite worked out why so I thought I'd put the sauce on the side rather than get it all over the chips and then find out I didn't like it. And I've got the Christmas cookie shake. So, a very festive last London meal. I know I've literally shown you like nothing today guys, but I promise there's been nothing interesting to show. Um, but I am now, I'm at Euston waiting on my train home. And I've come into Lyon. So I'm getting to try the second item I wanted to try from their Christmas menu which was the snow turkey burger. So this is the vegan burger with no actual turkey and then it says a good style cheese but it's not actual cheese because it's vegan. Crispy crumb soya vegetable protein burger and a third one topped with vegan cheese, slaw and cranberry sauce. And I am intrigued by this one. So this is the inside. It's um it doesn't taste like meat. If you're looking for something that's going to taste like turkey, it, it's not. You can tell it's like 
a veggie patty and the cheese is not the best cheese I've ever had but do you know what, saving the planet, I can feel good about myself for this meal so yeah, I'm going to eat it, probably not the best I've ever had but I'm not connoisseur of vegan food so it might be out absolutely outstanding in terms of vegan options on the high street so I'm not going to knock it, I'm going to finish it and I would eat it again.